ريدي بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته السلام عليكم كان ما شاء الله الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد We are very happy, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen, and I'm very blessed to have uh, Dr. Haifa Yunus uh, coming all the way from SoCal to visit us here at Valley Ranch Islamic Center to share with us, inshallah ta'ala, her wisdom on the subject of on the straight path, living Islam in the 21st century. Uh, a, a few words on Dr. Haifa. She is an American board certified OBG by profession, the founder and chairman of Jannah Institute. Alhamdulillah, she teaches the seminars on uh, thematic commentary of the Quran. Uh, um, many relevant uh, subjects for our time, day-to-day -day living uh, uh, subjects. She also offers uh, um, retreats on key topics that combine inner essence of Islam with the outward expression, mashallah. Uh, she graduated from uh, Mecca Institute of Islamic Studies in Jeddah, and I heard from her story, subhanAllah, you know, being a doctor is one thing, but living uh, uh, the life of a Muslim doctor is another thing, so she decided, you know what, this is what I want to do, alhamdulillah. So she completed her uh, uh, hifad, uh, as well, and, uh, um, uh, and then uh, joined uh, the, uh, at Al Huda, actually, Quran Mumarajesh School in Jeddah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And Tabarak Rahman, she travels around the world and also around the country to uh, give her, uh, her lectures. We are very blessed and honored to have you here, Dr. Haifa Yunus. Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah, Tabarak Allah. I asked one of my dear sisters, he's take a picture. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana innaka sami'un mujibu dua. Allahumma ni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa qalbin la yakhsha' wa nafsin la tashba' wa dua'in la yusma' ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Before I start How many of you have been to a place visiting a place not necessarily a masjid and you see things the person who invited you or the person who lives have never seen it before and you say wow your city, for example, or your home has this. And you say, really? How many of you? Show me hands. I'm sure it is more than that. Can everyone hear me well? No. That's what I thought. OK. So let me just uh, hold this one. So when I entered here, I visited this place before it was finished. It was before COVID, actually. I had a program in the old masjid. And I was impressed because it's big. Um, and then they were telling me about the, the vision. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opted after four years, I come in here. And I can't tell you the hospitality I have seen. It's 24 hours since I landed here. What really impressed me is the amount of people who attend this masjid. Yes, jazakallah khair. Yes, alhamdulillah. Yeah, much better, right? Yes. Like this morning for Fajr, I have not seen that many people on a Friday night. And I travel all over the country. I joke with my family, I live on the sky more than I live on earth. Why I'm saying this? Because, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ If each one of you in this masjid today, as I'm seeing you all, unless you feel what I said, and you're going to be grateful to it, Allah will take it away. And we have seen so many examples of that. And being grateful is not just saying Alhamdulillah. It's beautiful to say Alhamdulillah. But the Alhamdulillah has to come from here before it comes from here. And unless I feel it and I don't take it for granted and I show Allah I'm grateful, I use it well, I take care of it better than I take care of my home, I don't complain. I'm so grateful to everyone who works here. Allah will give you more. My friends, of course, in California texted me last night for reasons some of you may know. And they said, what did you see? And I'm going to share it with you because most of you don't feel it because you are in it. I said, I saw the following. I saw vision. I saw focus. I saw community. I didn't see a masjid. I saw a community. I saw people who works together.
to serve Allah, not to serve themselves. You don't see this a lot in a lot of masajids, and some of you, you know this very well. Be grateful. Be grateful. Don't complain. Take care of it. Take care of it very well. And the most important word, respect it. This is not my home or yours. This is his house. When I put my feet from this door or that door or that door, I need to remind myself. It's his house. And he honored me. I didn't honor him. I don't deserve. But he honored me to enter, to stay, to enjoy. And the Sheikh, may Allah reward him, just told me there is a tea afterward. I said, yeah, Sheikh, you're spoiling your community. <laughs> and may Allah reward everybody. So I wanted to start with this, and this is not planned. This is observation. You have no right to complain. Otherwise, I'll take you to where I go usually. <laughs> so bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. I didn't choose the subject. I had no idea till two days ago. But it's definitely a subject we need. And some of you may attend it, Sheikh Imam Zaid this, this afternoon. And I really loved every word he said. And if some of you didn't feel it or you think he's talking somewhere else, then you're not living in the United States. Fifteen years ago, when I used to come from Jeddah, and visit. I spent 20 years in St. Louis. So the sisters used to come to me for counseling. What was the problem 15 years ago? My son is marrying a woman. She's going to be a Muslim. But now she's not a Muslim. It used to be a disaster. A few years later, this is not an issue anymore. When I say this, she said she's going to become a Muslim. Now my daughter is not. My daughter is going to marry a man. He's going to be a Muslim. A few years later, it doesn't matter anymore. Just recently, I was in a wedding, and I saw a lady I haven't seen for a while, and I was asking her about her children. She says, Alhamdulillah, this is a true story. My son married a Muslim. It's only my daughter left. Please make a dua. And I was about to make that. I says, I want only two things. I said, what is it? She says, she marries. A, uh, a Muslim and a man. This is a true story. And I was not surprised. We are going, life is going with so quickly, so much changes. That's why the topic is extremely important. We need to stay strong as a community. We need to tackle the issues. Don't brush the issues. It's there. Some of you may not know it. I know it on a daily basis from the email I get and from the counseling. And I'm sure Sheikh Yasser sees even more than I do. It's there. The question, what do I do with it? How can I protect these? How can I protect me and you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the following. By the way, the concept of steadfastness is in the Quran. It's not something we invent now because we live in 2023 and we live in the West. It's in that time. It was an order given to a Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. Anyone in this room knows the order. It was given an order to Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam and then it was given order to all of us. It's in Surah, it, it's in Surah Hud, chapter 11, at the end. I think it's the verse 112. Allah said to Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكَ وَلَا تَطْغَوْ إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Stay steadfast. Write this word, not in, on a piece of paper, not in your phones, in your heart. I need it in every minute. فَاسْتَقِمْ Stay steadfast. Don't go right. Don't go left. وَمَنْ تَابَ معك And those with you. وَلَا تَطْغَوْ Don't overdo things. Don't go overboard. He sees everything we do. And in another verse, in Ashura, فَاسْتَقِيمُوا لَهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا Stay steadfast to Allah. 
What's a steadfast? What to somebody says, stay as you are. What does that mean? I'm gonna come to the basic questions. I just want you to think, don't answer me. And this for everybody. What does it mean to be a Muslim this day and age? That's number one question we all have to answer. What does a Muslim mean? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And you do the rest that you all know, the four other things. What does it mean? I wear my hijab, I come to the masjid, I pray, I go to Islamic school. Is that it? So what is the problem? What's the problem then? You know what's the problem? We move right and left. I'll give you an example of what somebody who's a steadfast doesn't change. C-H-A-N-G-E. And I see the change on daily basis. Wallahi When I went to study, I went to study for nine years. And I came back to my office. Some of the patients I was seeing, I delivered them in the early 2000s. You know what I said to my friends? Am I like the people of the cave? I went for 300 years and came back in a different time from what I am seeing and hearing. Steadfast, you need to be like a mountain. That's how they tell you. Al-Mustaqim, the person who stay on the path like a mountain. You don't live in a city where you see mountains, but if you come and visit me, you'll see the mountains on the right and the left. The mountain, they say the following, the mountain doesn't move or change when it is very cold or it is very hot and there is a severe wind from the top or there's a flood from below. The mountain stay as a mountain. Are you following what I'm saying? Are we mountains? How many say we are? I love this honest community. Yes. And is it easy to stay as a mountain? Absolutely not. Because we are human. Allah said this more in, than one time in the Quran. Do you see the person who took his own whims and desires as its God? I like it. It's okay. Allah is ghafoor and rahim. Everyone else is doing it. Why not me? And then we start these days even questioning the basics. Have you ever thought at one time in your life someone is going to attack the sunnah of Rasulullah or brush the book of Imam al-Bukhari? Let alone the hijab is not fard. This is a throne on us and all other things which Imam Zaid covered this afternoon. I need to stay straight and fixed on what I believe in front of all this wind. How do I do that? Verse in the Quran, one of my dearest one to my heart. It's twice. One is long and one is short. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا This is all of us, especially first part. Those who said my Lord is Allah. Who says this in this room? All of us. Then they stay straight, steadfast on that path. What I'm going to get? We live in a time, how much you're going to pay me? What I'm going to get out of it? What is the profit? And Allah knows how we think. Angels will be sent down to those people. Not only said, but acted and stayed firm. Angels is going to come. We don't see them, but they come. And they're going to say to me and to you, each one of us, don't worry. Don't be sad. Glad tiding for you, the Jannah. And la takhafu wa la tahzanu, when you read the commentary, they say both in this life, as I am living, and when I die, as the angels are coming to take my soul, and there. 
I need this verse to be in front of me when I am going to work and I'm speaking to the sisters and I'll give example for the brothers. When I'm going and I'm wearing my hijab for the first day. How many of you have felt this? Right? And you think everybody is looking at you. And you think everybody will put you down. And just on the side note, honestly, no one cares about us. It's us feeling. But in case that's the case, remember this. You want the angels to come to you and says, don't worry. Don't be sad. Don't worry about them. You need to live this way. And for the brothers, you have a, a business transaction, and they are convincing you, just let's take a loan. You know? And then you start thinking, should I, should I not? Did, should I go and ask, should I not? Remember this, istaqamu, steadfast. Stay straight, stay strong. And I live with this quote. Allah will never let us down. But he wants us to show him that we care about him and about his deen. Allah said this in the Quran. Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu, in tansurullaha yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. If you show victory to Allah, Allah will give you victory. But more importantly, he will keep you steadfast. This is in Surah Muhammad. Steadfast, don't change. You know what I say to people? Why the people on falsehood? They are so proud of what they believe in. And why we, the people of who Allah chose, and Allah gave us this deen, and we know we are right, humanity, morality, all this. Why we are shy? Why do we have to sugarcoat? And I'm not saying be, be not pleasant. Don't be diplomatic. But don't change the deen to please human beings. Don't sell, I say this to myself, don't sell your akhirah for this dunya. It doesn't worth it. At the end, we are all going. فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ A man came to Rasul alayhi salatu wassalam, a sahabi. He said, Ya Rasulullah, say something to me about Islam. And don't make it too long. Like you and me these days. Give me the bottom line. And this is what the beauty of Rasul alayhi salatu wassalam, one of it is he gave every sahabi an advice according to what he needs. And he said, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ Say, I believe in Allah, and stay steadfast. Stay steadfast. A dua that I'm sure most of you know it. What is the most common dua he used to say, alayhi salatu wassalam? Sayyidu Umm Salama narrated this hadith. She said, the most I hear, there's more than one, by the way, but this one she said, I hear him saying, Rasul alayhi salatu wassalam, Ya muthabbit al-qulub, ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenak. Ya musarrif al-qulub, sarrif qalbi ila ta'atik. Say it, say it in your sujood. O oh, you who turn the hearts, turn the hearts. Keep my heart steadfast on your deen. Because if my heart steadfast, don't worry about the rest. The rest will follow. And then, Ya Musarrif al qulub the one who turns the heart to directions. Sarruf qalbi ila ta'atak, move my heart so I love to obey you. I am not forced, I'm not struggling, I love it, I want to do it. And he said in another hadith, La yastaqimu imanu abd, hatta yastaqima qalbu, wa la yastaqimu qalbu hatta yastaqima lisanu. The, your iman, your faith, and my faith will not be correct unless my heart and yours is correct. And this will not be correct unless my tongue is correct. Practical tips. I have about five, less than five minutes. How do I do it? How many of you saying, say, being a Muslim in this day and age is easy? Alhamdulillah. How many of you say, being a Muslim, the true Muslim, I can't do it? 
It's very challenging. Alhamdulillah. Then we have hope in this community. Because you are realistic, you know the issues, but you didn't give hope. You didn't give up on yourself. And you shouldn't. My neighbor, but in, not in California, when I was in St. Louis, three homes, one of my best friends, non-Muslim, at one point looked at me and says, I would love to be a Muslim if it was not for my family. And I said, what you loved about this? You will not believe it. She said, you are the only religion. Still believe in him, worship him. I can't imagine what I see on Friday because the masjid where we used to, very close, what I see, and I said, you better go and see in Ramadan what you see. So alhamdulillah, we are not too bad. We are challenged, and we are not challenged by outside, believe me. We are challenged by ourselves. What should I do? When we had the COVID, what did we do? What did we do? You did nothing? What did you do? You took precautions. Why did we wear masks? Why there were signs? I'm sure there were signs, right? Distance, right? Don't interact, minimum social interact. What is this called? Prevention. Number one, to stay strong, remove what makes you weak. And number one that makes me weak is what? Depends on your age, but in general, I want to hear it. Why don't you give your children phones? Because of social media. Social media affect us all, all. And, and I spoke with our the, uh, marketing director in Jannah Institute, and I said, just tell me, teach me, what is this marketing thing does? It's amazing what it does to you and me. It's all by suggestion. Remove what makes you weak. Remove what does not make you strong. Who are your friends? Who do you spend time with? What's your relationship with him? What's your relationship with his book? What's your relationship with his creation? Why did you all come here? I was told there was two big, huge tents outside. Am I correct? And this masjid was full pack jam. Aren't you the same person? Did Allah inject something in you in Ramadan? And then Ramadan end, no more injections? And you were fasting, and you were working, and you were going to school, and some of you had exams. What was the difference? And why now it's not the same? Because I was doing the extras. I was coming to the masjid and I'm fasting and I'm tired. And I had this company, this company, and I was reading his book. And I was doing Quran. What is the end? I was here on the night of 27 and it was Tuesday. It was not a weekend till 3 a.m. True or false? Aren't you the same person? That's it. That's what keeps you strong. Constant interaction with Allah before with people. His book, his words, his actions, his house. Add, remove what makes you weak. And number one makes me and you weak. Number one problem, which Rasulullah said to Sayyidina Mu'adh, watch this. Amsik alayka lisanak. Hold on to your tongue. Don't talk too much. And talk these days is not only talk. It's a lot of talk these days, but without words being said. And most important, I will end up with this so we can give you some time for question and answer. Two things. Number one, dua. Don't give up on yourself. Even if you see yourself low, we all go up and down. No one is perfect. No one stay like this. No one including the Rasul otherwise Allah would not have said to him, stay steadfast. So don't give up on yourself, but also don't be too lenient. It's okay. Don't keep saying it's okay to yourself. When you are too tight on yourself, say it's okay. When your nafs is too loose, say come on. Dua, 
dua and dua and don't give up and make dua for each other. And one of my favorite dua is Rudda al Muslimina ila dinika marudda jamila. Ya Allah, bring all the Muslims back to your deen, beautiful way of return. Ya Rabbi, Ameen. Allahumma ja'alna minna alladhina yistami'una al-qawla fayittabi'una ahsana. Ya Allah, make us from those who listen to the word of admonition and follow the best of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those steadfast now, steadfast tomorrow, steadfast yesterday, and steadfast next year. Ya Rabbi, Ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. Any questions? Yes, please. You have to stand up because I'm not going to be able to hear it. And I'll repeat the question, especially for the sisters in the back. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Jazakallah khair. And I'm so impressed with the amount of the youth that attend the masjid. Hi, it's beautiful. Um, yes. yes, I was saying that, you know how you said you need to make dua to implement change? Yes. And say you're making continuous dua and you're very, um, how do I say this? Like you're very passionate about something and then time passes. Time passes and it's not coming. It's not happening. You're not seeing the change. You're trying. At least you feel like you're trying. But the change isn't coming. Your dua isn't working to the point where you feel like, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm silented. I don't want to even make the dua. Like, I'm just. That's actually Rasul Did everyone, everyone heard the question? Alhamdulillah. This is actually a hadith of Rasul in this about this concept. The meaning of, don't you say, I kept asking, literally what you just said. I kept asking, and Allah did not respond. Now, and I don't mean you, but just because we all say it, by the way. The fact I say, Allah did not answer me, I'm negating a verse in the Quran. True or false? You all heard this in Ramadan. It's in between the ayat of Siyam. It's in between the verses of Siyam. What did Allah said? وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ That one. But the second one, in the one I referred to earlier, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عَنِّي عِبَادِي What? فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ If they ask you about me, I need you to memorize this. If my servant asks you about me, there is no say. He said, I am near. I hear what they are saying. I hear their dua. They need to respond to me and believe in me, and they will be guided. This is how shaitan comes to you. Responding to the dua, not necessarily come the way I want. Ya Rabbi, I need water this size, cold, and then the water comes in front of me. No. The dua is, I'm sure many of you know this, dua is responding in three ways. It's so either you will get exactly what you are asking, or there is a harm that's going to be removed from you, or Allah will keep it and reward you in the day of judgment. Having said that, the question why you are changing, not changing, or not staying strong, what are you doing? Don't tell me this is public. You need to remove everybody, myself number one. You need to remove disobedience from your homes. And unfortunately, these days, some of the obvious disobedience 10 years ago became norm. And then I say, why my dua is not being answered? I always say this to parents when they come and the children in big troubles. And I say, I don't know your home, but I'm just asking a question. Is there haram inside the house? And I need to you to, de to define haram. It's not only the usual. What do you watch on TV? What do you listen to? What do you talk about? Th there's a lot of haram in this. I'm not saying you, but in general. I need to analyze my day. And then I'm going to ask Allah, if I didn't see it, show me. Learn to talk to Allah. N beautiful in the dua, as we know. But what about if I don't know the dua? Talk to him. 
I know you're hearing me. اللهم إنك ترى مكاني. You see my place. وتسمع كلامي. You hear what I am saying. وتعلم سري وعلانيتي. And you know what's hidden and what's obvious. Show me, يا الله. I know you hear my dua. What am I doing that I'm not changing? والله. And I said, والله. You say this and see how he will tell you. But don't give up and never say Allah doesn't, did not answer my dua. He always does. May Allah make it easy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Any question? Alhamdulillah, no question, that's good news. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, please. I think we can hear you. Yes. Uh-huh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. So with regards to that, like, I think there's a decent amount of uh, change required, adoption, right? If somebody still want to do that, my question is like, how to get that adoption? How a person sh should get change? If we still do the same that, you know, because a nearby folks, one or two times, they may go ahead and say, you know what, let's not do this, you know? I think there's a proper way of doing it. Let's go to, let's read Quran. Let's see in Hadith whether it's there or not. I think at the same time, it's, it's part of adoption. If somebody don't want to adopt, then what is it we're gonna do? That's my first question. And the second question is like, I think for sure like, there are a lot of families here who came with their children. Sure. So, so I have blessed with four kids, three daughters and a son. Ah, sure. And then, uh, Alhamdulillah. So, a daily debate between me and my wife would be, you know, we were too good in India, you know what? We came here to this culture and then, trust me, Allah is listening to all of us and uh, that's what we discuss, what we should do, you know? Every day something comes up stating that, you know, in schools something got introduced, you know? Somebody says that there's a sex education they're gonna teach to the kids. I think at home, at maximum, we can, uh, we can in our culture, we can define it and all. Then what is that we can do as a community that, you know, schools and all can also be properly monetized, right? And I think everyone here wish is that, you know, all their kids should go to Islamic school in America. I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, I think we all need to do a lot of prayer for that so that all of our kids should go to Islamic school. Okay, so, the, the, okay, so what do, should we do to our children? That's a question. Yeah. And the second one? The second one is what if we keep, I mean, if somebody don't want to change their life. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So let's take the first one. If you don't want to change, you will not change. Allah, I, there's a verse in Surah Al-Isra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man arad al-akhirah, wa sa'a laha sa'yaha, Whomsoever wants the hereafter. Once. Number one, I have to want it. But that's not enough. You work hard. Sa'i is one of the hardest pillars of Hajj or, or of Umrah. You have to work hard and you work for it. Laha, for the Akhirah. Three, wahu mu'min, believe that Allah will never let him down. And Allah right away say, فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Your hard work will bring fruit. Now you have to be patient. You know, when this comes up, I always say this to myself. Why did the Rasul stay 10 years or 13 years in Mecca suffering? Couldn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved him right away to Medina? Why this time? Because everything takes time. Everything takes time. It took me more than 12 years to become an OBGYN. Need time, we need patience. And the reward is not on the result. The reward is on the efforts. Your dua will be rewarded because you're making the dua. That's more than enough. So I need to be patient and I need to be persistent. 
And sometimes it comes right away, sometimes it takes years. That's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the most important thing, and I didn't have time to elaborate, for me and you to stay steadfast, you know what? Allah. Know Allah. Know who is He, not the superficial Allah, the real one, that the one who feed me, the one who, when I'm sick, cure me, the one who gives me children, the one who doesn't want to give me children. It's all Him. Children is a major issue these days. This, this is a huge challenge. Now we have to remember we are a small, we are a baby community if you compare it with the other communities. What the Islam, what the Muslim, in my personal opinion, in the Muslim community in the West now, what they need, no more masajid. What we need is proper Islamic schools. Proper. You know, when people complain about the Islamic school when I was in St. Louis, and I did actually a search, and I said, look at the budget of the public school, and come and look at the budget of the Islamic school. Reality, right? Four times, four to millions. We need to protect the children is we need our own Islamic school. And exactly as Imam Zaid said it today, and we are not apologetic about what we believe in. A man is a man, a woman is a woman. That's it. I had this discussion with Muslim youth, and I'm an OBGYN, and they kept telling me they were born like that. I said, Wallahi, I've been 20 years OBGYN. I've never delivered, but a man, a boy, or a girl. I've done surgeries, Allah knows how many. There is nothing in that woman except ovary and uterus, very few exceptions. But that's what they feed them in schools. Till we get there, and this is, I've seen this, this is one of the best things in California. They do homeschooling. It's huge, especially in Southern California. I, they had a conference last Saturday, 300 families. 300 families educated. They say, we are not gonna put our kids because that's the norm. Anywhere you go now, I went to a dentist. I had to fill information, she, he, others. Subhanallah. So for what we can do is Islamic schools, homeschooling. You can't. Not everyone can do that. Your home has to counteract what they see in eight hours in the school. In action. You're not going to bring them on a Sunday school here for two or three hours, and you think they will become Imam Abu Hanifa. They're not going to happen. It's not going to happen, honestly because it's a huge flood out there. You need to be the proper Muslim. You need to be the proper Muslim. Practice, and Allah is number one, and the deen is number one, and I will end up with this. The result is not in your hand or mine. Sayyidina Nuh, his son was kafir. Sayyidina Ibrahim, his father was kafir. And a lot of dua, and a lot of dua, and may Allah protect all the children, Ya Rabbi Ameen. Time for the tea, Sheikh? Because <laughs> he gave me times and I don't. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Jazakallah for, for being here today. Um, I had a quick question, and it was in regards to uh, the topic of being on steadfast. Um, and Jazakallah for such a beautiful topic. But my question was sometimes in our life, people tend to live on either uh, two extremes. Finding a middle uh, ground is very difficult for them. So if they work, they overwork. They become workaholics. If they, you know, are mothers, they're so into motherhood, they tend to forget that they were an individual first. If they are, you know, they, they go to extremes. I was wondering how would a Muslim in nowadays age, because there's so much demand on, on us as humans now, um, how would we keep ourselves steadfast? What are steps that we can try to limit ourselves from that extremism? Because we catch ourselves becoming, instead of you know just a Muslim and a, a mu'min and a mu'mina, we become you know workaholics. We become okay. you know, overdoing moms. Simple. As long as everything you are doing is halal, that's the number one requirement. Use something called, which is essence of this deen, is the niya is intention. I always tell to breastfeeding mothers, right? Or she has a baby and she has to change the diaper. 
make this an act of worship by changing your niya. Because if nobody will change the diaper of this baby, what will happen? If you didn't take care of the amana Allah gave you. And don't change it because he's your baby. That's not for Allah. You change it because this is an amana Allah gave it to you and you're doing it to please Allah. And in everything you do, change your niya. This is one of the first thing I learned. When I start studying, I wanted to quit OBGYN. You know, this is all of us. I can't do it. I remember. And my teacher said the following. May Allah reward them Jannah al firdaus He said, no. We need educated Muslim. Because if every Muslim will quit and study, who's going to be taking care of the community? He said, but when you open the door, and this is for every physician, if there are physicians here. When you open the door to see a patient, say to Allah before you open the door, Ya Rabbi, this is for you. So if the patient praised you, or the patient sued you, it doesn't matter, because you did it for Allah. And this way you, ch you wash the dishes, you cook for the family, the brothers going out to work, or going out to get grocery, whatever you're doing, make it for Allah. And it is for Allah, as long as it is halal, done in the halal way. And then put the, uh, the last thing I'll say, put the akhirah before your dunya. And if I'm doing 16 hours for work, and I have no niya, where is the akhir? But it is possible, bi idnillah. Wa yes, please. Wa Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zakumullah khair, Dr. Haibar, for this beautiful uh, 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 gathering and this beautiful talk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your Rabbil Alameen. Looking forward to host you more, inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala. As uh, we'd love to continue with this as a, as a family, inshallah, night, so there's a tea served. I guess we did not anticipate that many people. So first come, first serve. If we didn't get anything, just make dua, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. We have about 25 minutes until, or 20 minutes until uh, uh, Salat al-Isha, inshallah ta'ala. Please uh, make your way to the rotunda, inshallah.